Hello, hello, and welcome back to Bumble Me, my friends. I am your host, Teresa, and today's countdown is the top 10 weirdest laws around the world that you've never heard of. So prepare for some old, some new, and some weirdly continuous. Starting with take no prisoners. Draconian law may be more identifiable to some, especially my history or mythology lovers. Draco of Thessaly is considered the first legislator of Athens, around 621 BC. And when it came to punishing lawbreakers, he didn't mess around. Before Draco, Greece's laws were either settled by blood feud or through a series of oral laws passed down from generation to generation, making him the first man to introduce written penal code. And he decided with it that death was the punishment for literally everything. It was all on the based on that single sentence, the death penalty. Had he killed someone? Death penalty. Had he stolen an animal? Death penalty. Did you forget to pay taxes? Death penalty. Stole a cabbage? Death penalty. And so on. Luckily for the Athenians, Draco's successor Solon annulled everything but death penalty for killing someone else. When asked why he had decided to make so many offenses punishable by death, Draco replied that as far as he was concerned, people deserve to die even for minor crimes. And he could think of no worse punishment for the more heinous ones. Draco's laws may have been scrapped by Salon, but his name lives on through the ages. Whenever a punishment is grossly disproportionate to the crime committed, we call it draconian. Yeehaw to my doomsday preppers, this one's for you guys, the Swiss Bunker Law. In 1963, the Swiss government made it illegal for homes not to have access to a nuclear bunker. This is the result of the Cold War and the utter terror of nuclear activity. The devastating effects on those populations that had fallen victim to it in other countries, well, people who had seen it were shaking at the knees terrified that the US-Soviet relations would cause an all-out nuclear warfare similar to those. Most nations resorted to making public information leaflets to teach people how to survive an attack, put out commercials or radio ads, you could buy a little home safety preparedness kit even. Switzerland went one step further by passing the first first measures to make sure every inhabitant had access to a nuclear shelter. These laws are still enshrined in articles 45 and 46 of Swiss federal law on civil protection. Most buildings erected since 1963 have their own bunkers. Despite some shelters now being defunct, Swiss law still stipulates that every resident of Switzerland must be guaranteed a shelter in the vicinity of their place of residence. Today, there are around 360,000 communal fallout shelters in Switzerland that are operational to this day. Next Next up, thou shall not steal cereal. The law of 12 tables is the first known legal code drafted in Rome around 450 BC. One of the laws stipulated was in relation to the agricultural god Cersei. Highly adored, she was believed to bring the grain crops and many festivals were held in her honor and she was worshipped accordingly to that. In fact, it meant that anyone who cut or picked up another's grains, aka stole it, was destined to be sacrificed to the goddess Ceres. See, this was done after they were already put to death via burning, hanging, dismembering. As long as he was an adult man, his body was getting sacrificed. If it was not an adult man, the sentence was just a restored double of what had been taken grain wise. AKA pay it back bro and be happy you weren't flayed alive over it. So yeah, hands off the mini wheats your co-workers left in the work pantry or else you're getting sacrificed by HR to the old Greek gods in the break room during lunch. Now it's time for some intense hide and seek. Romans once had a set of rules they called apusium shia, I'm not gonna try it, but these laws were based on how long you had to possess something before it became your property. If you held on to anything long enough, it could become legally yours, and this actually included people, naturally. Wives legally became their husband's property if they stayed in his house for one year straight. But if she really wanted her freedom, even whilst married, she could have it as long as she left the house for three continuous days each year, every year. Didn't matter when, although some communities and cities actually chose on a calendar when the three days would be, and all all the women did it on the same day like a mass game of predator prey. So every year in Rome, women would leave their homes and hide somewhere else for a few days or else become possessions. Let the dead lie, unless it's in court, then it's perjury. During the reign of Mary, Queen of Scots, and her son, James III, corpses regularly appeared in court. With all the wacky events and battles, keeping it in the family, coups, and power changes of the 16th century Scotland, someone was always out for revenge or some kind of restitution, especially their royals. So it's no surprise therefore that a post-mortem punishment for treason got introduced in 1542. Officials exhumed corpses and often embalmed them for the occasion. The only prohibition stated that the prosecution had to take place within five years of the traitor's death. A corpse on trial is one thing, but a skeleton
skeleton charged with treason is just plain silly. And now, our next topic is how thou shall not market Viagra. Before Sidnophil was discovered in the 1990s to make the little blue pill possible, there was no effective drug for male dysfunction. And so, for centuries, an endless line of companies and cracks alike claimed otherwise and made money from selling men an astonishing variety of cures, from snakes to cyclin to cannabis. Now, obviously, this can become an issue. These faux products are potentially dangerous or laced or smuggled or just weird illegal stuff. As as a result, the Canadian government's hand is forced into protecting its gullible and desperate men and banned the advertising or publishing of an advertisement of any means, instructions, medicine, or article intended as representation as a method for restoring sexual virility, which can be found in the section of the criminal code titled Offenses Tending to Corrupt Morals. Real New Age dysfunction drugs prescribed by real doctors and sold by real pharmacies have since arrived and thus a sense of safety and a man's ability to get his boys going. But what hasn't arrived is the end of this law. To this day, there is a provision banning advertising them in Canada that the Viagra company regularly competes with, making subtle nods and winks to what their product is and does in their commercials. Up next, Finders Keepers applies to people. The Yernamu Code is a code of Sumerian laws drafted between 2100 and 2050 BC, which may have inspired the drafting of the Hammurabi Code. We ain't sure. What we are sure about is kidnapping of persons was punishable by death but only if both kidnapper and captured were free men. If the abductee was a worker or serf, there was just a monetary fine for it. But similar to how our Roman girlies had to go hide out survivor style to avoid being property, if the abducted was a woman, the captor could always claim that she'd been found alone in the street without companions and therefore he couldn't know if she belonged to anyone and now she legally belongs to him. Your mom, your dad, your bro, your sis, they could all come banging down his door but unless a witness stated otherwise that she wasn't out alone at the time she was kidnapped, she could be taken home from the market like the pig's feeds and yams homeboy was gonna make for dinner that night. The Hittites took being animal lovers to a whole other level. Federal level, to say the least. They were a second millennium BCE Indo-European population that lived in what's nowadays central Turkey. And their law collection was probably composed around 1650 BC, 1600 BCE, and thus predates the biblical laws by many centuries. And like most laws predating biblical ones, they were straight bonkers and inconsistent. For example, laws 187, 188, and 199 and 200 address bestiality. Rather than offering a blanket prohibition with a single penalty against the act, these laws actually distinguish the levels of penalty on what animal it was that a person had chosen to engage with. Because they're so specified but we have so little information on their people thus far, no persuasive solution has been offered as to why these particular animals have been singled out in crime. So, if it was a dog dog or a pig, you got the death penalty. A horse or a mule was punishable by never being able to appear before the king again or in his eye line. But if it was a cow, the king could decide if there was condemnation or not. Maybe it had to be like a really hot cow or something, I don't know. Did you guys know it was illegal to swear though? At least in the city of Rockville, Maryland, where the seat of Montgomery County that makes up part of the Baltimore, Washington metropolitan area. Here it's a misdemeanor to swear near any street, highway, or sidewalk where people passing by. I could hear you. If violated, it's actually declared a misdemeanor. Listed below is the actual description of the law as written. A. A person may not profanely curse or swear or use obscene language upon or near any street, sidewalk, or highway within the hearings of a person passing by upon or along such street, sidewalk, or highway. B. A person may not act in a disorderly manner by profanely cursing, swearing, or using obscene language. And C. Any person who violates this section is guilty of a misdemeanor. Profanity is a staple of road rage. The city's roughly 61,000 residents may not even be aware of it, but if they lose their cool in traffic, they could be breaking one of their city's most superfluous laws. And if a recent survey is taken is to be trusted, women would have more trouble following this anti-cursing law than men, who are more likely to just use a horn when they're annoyed. Women, however, swear a lot more often, even with passengers or children in the car, and even statistically are likely to give drivers the finger more often. On a more serious note though, road rage is dangerous and can lead people to behave with such a lack of regard for other safety that it constitutes negligence and sometimes even assault. Laws like this one are put in place to minimize potential damage, accidents, and violence. The laws of daddy's love is our final checkpoint. In the early days of Rome, there was no limit to what a father could do to his family to a degree that it's actually kind of scary. If his children misbehaved, he could straight up kill them, doesn't matter how old they were. Daughters still had to fear their fathers even after marriage, when she was 
legally someone else's property. And his sons only earned independence when their father died. He could sell you, trade you, love you or hate you. It genuinely was a good time era to stay in your dad's good books. Now, if a man caught his wife having an affair, he was encouraged to lock his wife and her lover up in like the bathroom, I guess, maybe a dog kennel, maybe they just had cages ready, I don't know. And he had 20 hours to call as many neighbors as he could and invite them to check out the guy and his wife that they'd been, you know, doing stuff with. He then had three days to make a public declaration describing where he found his wife, who was banging her, and any extra juicy details he could supply. He was also then legally required to divorce said wife, or else he would be charged with pimping. So that is fun. Straight up shopping list of errands to do after finding out your old girl's been doing it with Steve the elixir maker, huh? Anyways, vengeful husbands could actually kill their wives' lovers, but only if he was a slave or a male night worker. If a citizen, though, he would have to go talk to his father-in-law because fathers in Rome could legally kill their daughter's lovers no matter how nice of a toga they wore. So if dad in law approved of the plan, the two of you could go on a hunting trip for the dude because blame him and not her, right? Makes sense. Anywho, if a woman caught her husband having an affair, pretty much the only thing she could legally do was cry about it. As so long as there weren't any funerals going on nearby since it was illegal for women to cry at those then. Alright, alright, we are finished for today. Thanks so much for tuning in once again for some weird and wacky content. Hope you enjoyed. Be sure to like and subscribe for regularly posted content and comment down below what weird laws you may have experienced in other countries or places.